Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our workshop entitled How to Pay for Long-Term Care Without Going Broke. We are so happy that you've decided to join us this morning, and we can't wait to provide you with exclusive information and resources that will give you a deeper understanding of us and our services. I would like to invite you all to type any questions that you may have in the chat box that's located at the very bottom of your screen throughout the presentation. And then at the end of the hour, we will address any questions or concerns that you may have. In the next 45 minutes, Randy's going to teach you how to completely change your life and protect your assets and your family from the cost of long-term care. So stay tuned, you don't wanna miss this imperative information. So now, without any further ado, I would like to go ahead and hand it over to our attorney, Mr. Randy Klinkscales, to get us started. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Randy Klinkscales, as Emily indicated. Um, I, and as she also indicated, I, in the next 50 minutes or so, I'm going to show you how to uh, pay for long-term care without going broke. Uh, and before we get started here, I'm just going to uh, ask you uh, to type in the chat box uh, whether or not you can hear me all right or not. Just type Y for yes and N for no, and make sure you can see the screen. Um, I, I say this because I did a presentation oh, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, only to learn after the presentation that my, my mic had been sitting off to the side and I sounded rather quiet, which is not uh, typical for me. Uh, so today, uh, you're going to learn uh, uh, ab about ways to pay for care, uh, how to protect your spouse, uh, how to preserve and protect your business, your investments, uh, and to stay at home. So em Emily, uh, is, there, is everybody able to hear me all right? Yep, lots of whys. You sound good. Great. Uh, and so this is for you if you're concerned about losing everything to long-term care costs, uh, if you're wondering how to pay for long-term care, uh, if that becomes necessary. And we're going to talk about uh, how, ways to stay out of the nursing home. Uh, if you're concerned about uh, being sure that your spouse is protected, uh, and a lot of times that's a driving uh, motivation. Uh, if you're wanting to pass on a business or a property uh, to your family, uh, and if you're wanting to stay at home. I, I will tell you that this, this uh, question is probably the most common question uh, that people call our office about, uh, because they're, they're aware of our ability uh, to help people know how to uh, pay for care. Uh, so you're not alone if, if, you're, if you've got this question. Many times when I interview a family, not many times, always, when I interview a family, I, uh, at the end of the interview, after we've talked about healthcare, we've talked about their finances, I, I talk to them about what, what is their goal. If they could wave a magic wand, uh, what is it that they would want to have happen? And these are common responses. Uh, they would like to stay at home as they age. <clears throat> they would like to be able to pay for care without losing everything. Uh, they want to protect their property for uh, their spouse, uh, their children or others. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's wanting to pass on a business to uh, uh, others that may depend on that business, uh, knowing that your spouse will be protected even if you need Medicaid. I uh, thought I would share with you uh, a little bit about uh, something one of my uh, staff, one of my clients stated, said, um, we worked with them. Uh, so really this is uh, something that uh, this family, uh, JF, uh, uh, shared with me. All of the staff our family worked with were caring and competent. Their assistance throughout the long journey of mother's struggle with dementia were very much appreciated. So before we go on, who, who am I? Um, some of you uh, may not know me, others do, but uh, I'm an attorney. Uh, I have offices in uh, Hayes and Wichita. Uh, I've been practicing uh, uh, 40 something years. 
Uh, but the last 16 years, I've really focused on uh, elder, elder care issues. And uh, that means I've, I'm focused on people with aging and chronic care issues uh, and uh, families that are wanting to preserve their assets from long-term care. And the reason the last 16 have been the best is, oh, before I get to that, this is my family, uh, my three sons and my daughter-in-law and my grandsons um, uh, have been with me on this journey. Uh, but why am I so passionate? Uh, it's really because of my, my uh, transition to elder care, taking care of my grandmother. Uh, and I learned a lot from her in that journey. Uh, primarily, she wanted to be independent. Second, she wanted to stay out of the nursing home as long as possible. Uh, and she wanted to pre preserve her assets to main maintain the lifestyle that she wanted. And I also learned that I, as a caregiver, needed assistance, that I, I could not do it alone. And I learned from her that I could have a plan uh, uh, but I needed a guide, but that the plan is gonna be changing uh, and we need to be ready to make changes best ba based on uh, what, what happens. But having said all of that, this, this is really not about me. Uh, let me share with you some results that my clients have gotten over time. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, FW set forth uh, in a note to me, when my wife got sick and needed nurse, the nursing home, I was told I would have to sell my home and my farm. I thought I would go broke. Randy saved my farm for me and my children. And just, you know, we'll let you know where background, his uh, wife had gone into the nursing home and he and his son came in to see me and we were able to protect the farm uh, so that his son continued to farm even uh, after, uh, uh, this gentleman uh, had uh, retired or, uh, and, and went on through life. So uh, long-term uh, chronic illness does not have to financially uh, devastate your, your finances or your family. Uh, let me share with you uh, three things that I'm going to show you. You're going to discover how to plan for long-term care costs. Secondly, you're going to, to discover how to pay for long-term care. And third, you're going to talk, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to share with you how to stay at home. So let's jump right into it. Uh, uh, the first one is how to plan for long-term care costs. And uh, I can't overemphasize this, that planning avoids crisis. Um, uh, it allows you to protect what's most important by planning ahead of time and you're in control. So let me give you an example here. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, uh, 65 and 66, uh, they're clients. Um, they're, uh, they wanted to protect the farm. They own their home in 480 acres and they've got some cash retirement funds. Uh, the farm has been the family for generation, uh, for generations. Uh, Long-term care costs now are seven to $10,000 per month. Uh, there's some that are a little bit cheaper. There's some that are a lot more expensive. Uh, but if you need nursing home, uh, they knew that they would use up all their cash and would have to sell the farm. So we designed a plan that would protect the land from long-term care, as well as lawsuits and bankruptcy. And basically we put everything in, we put their land into an irrevocable trust, but they would continue to farm it and uh, make decisions about it and could change the beneficiaries. But the important thing was that they were fairly healthy. Uh, and so we were able to start uh, before there was a crisis. crisis. And as they stated, the investment was well worth protecting our assets from care cost of $7,000 a month. Here's another example of pre-planning. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Schmidt were, were 72 and 70. 
Uh, and, and actually, let me just give you a little bit of background. They had just bought some long-term care insurance that would only pay about $3,000 a month. Um, it was quite expensive, uh, primarily because of the age of Mr. and Mrs. Schmidt. So they came in to see me. And, and again, their goal was they wanted to protect each other if one of them got sick. Uh, they each had some IRA money and some investments. They had three children and five grandchildren. Uh, they were concerned that if one got sick, they would use up the, I think they had a three-year policy. Uh, they would use up their three-year long-term care policy uh, and it would not be enough to pay the monthly expense and then their spouse would be in, impoverished and they wanted to leave some money to their grandchildren. <clears throat> so after uh, analyzing their situation, uh, what we recommended and helped them find was a special type of hybrid life insurance policy that had a long-term care rider with no annual premium. In this particular case, we, we, we purchased a lo a, the life insurance policy using uh, Mrs. Sch Schmidt's IRA, we used $150,000 of it. Uh, that was a tax-free exchange. Uh, she got $250,000 of long-term care, uh, I'm sorry, $250,000 of life insurance uh, and $7,000 a month of long-term care uh, insurance with um, a five-year policy. Uh, there's no annual premium. If they file a claim on the long-term care insurance, then all it does is it reduces the death benefit of the life insurance policy. So in theory, if, they, if nothing happens to either one of them, then what will happen, their family will get $250,000. Uh, and it was funny because it's actually the children are the ones that uh, brought them into the, into the office because they were um, reluctant to do any type of planning. But uh, again, they were really thrilled that when we got the result, they dropped their, their, their long-term care policy that they had just purchased that was too expensive and with limited benefits. And so what, what do you need to do? If you're trying to pre-plan, uh, you're not in a crisis, uh, then what we will do is uh, uh, our offer to you is to schedule a free strategy session and we'll explore what options are available. Uh, we want to get some estate planning, strong documents into place. Um, and we want to start implementing that strategy right away to avoid any roadblocks or changes in circumstances. And so, you know, sometimes I have people come in to me and, and we talk and, and they don't get anything done. And then a couple of years later, they come back in and they're in a crisis. And so, our options become uh, more limited. Uh, we still have options, but their options are, are, are more limited than they were when, uh, when they first came in uh, a couple years earlier. Uh, so the second one we, we want to talk about is um, uh, how to pay for long-term care. Uh, and again, as I told you, this is a, uh, one of the most common questions uh, we, we've uh, been uh, asked in our office. Um, and so uh, the points here is that you make a decision on how to pay for care. Uh, you don't have to go broke if you need long-term care. Uh, and, and I'm gonna show you with, with an example how you can use government benefits to pay for care, such as Medicare, VA, and, and Medicaid. So let's talk about using planned resources to pay for care. Uh, and uh, in, th in this particular case, uh, 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 Mrs. Johnson called us, uh, her, her husband had had a stroke, was in the hospital <clears throat> and he needed to be discharged. discharged. Um, they had uh, a business and investments worth $500,000, they had some long-term care insurance of $200 a day. Uh, you know, I think the issue here was that 
before Mr. Johnson had had a stroke, he had been really pretty healthy. Uh, and so they were really caught uh, uh, by surprise and realized that he could end up living for a long time uh, with a substantial disability. And they were concerned how to pay for care and what, what's gonna happen when they used up their long-term care policy. Um, and again, let me go back again, the hospital wanted to discharge him. So the, our solution is that we helped uh, transition Mr. Johnson to an appropriate skilled facility so we could tap into Medicare and Medicare would pay for his care uh, while he was getting rehabilitation. <clears throat> we developed a plan for Mr. Johnson to come home, uh, tapping into the long-term care policy to make some of the uh, home improvements and to provide uh, some of the home care. We, didn't, we weren't using $200 a day of the long-term care policy. And by not using all of it, we stretched out the length of that long-term care policy. The result was that uh, Mr. Johnson's care uh, was paid for at a skilled facility by Medicare uh, without tapping into the long-term care policy. Mr. Johnson got well enough because of the care he got to go home with a lot of assistance. Uh, and then the assistance at home was paid for by the long-term care policy. So Mrs. Johnson's phone call did four things. It got, Medicare, it got the Medicare benefits extended. It got the health improvement Mr. Johnson needed. And Mr. Johnson was able to return home. And the long-term care policy was extended, uh, protecting more and more of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson's assets. And then the next one I, I want to show you again, uh, this is a little bit of a crisis, but uh, we, we got involved really early uh, and it really made a difference. And so um, this is the Lundgren family. Um, they were referred to us by um, a neurologist. Uh, they're a farming family. Uh, at the neurologist office, Mr. Lundgren uh, was told that he had early cognitive decline, but he's still a very active farmer and has capacity. Uh, he was aware of some cognitive problems, uh, it, but he was, he was concerned about what would happen if years from now uh, that really got more out of control. And he was concerned about uh, his wife and his children and what his illness would have, what impact it would have on, on them financially, uh, as well as uh, trying to oversee his care. <clears throat> so I, I visited with Mr. Lundgren and he, his comment to me was, I want to stay in control, but I want to be sure that my wife and my land are protected. So we set up broad powers of attorneys. Uh, we put his land into a special type of irrevocable trust. <clears throat> we added Mr. Lundgren's care instructions to his healthcare power of attorney and met with his agents so that they know what his wishes are. And, and that's really important that your, your agents be on the same page as you when it comes to care issues. And so the result was that though it may be several years before Mr. Lundgren ever needs health assistance, his goals are achieved through his plan that's set forth in his documents. That is his land is protected he remains in control and continues to farm. Uh, if at some point uh, he does lose capacity and need lo needs long-term care, his wife has the power to further protect his resources. His care goals, given his diagnosis of dementia, uh, uh, are, are in writing and it takes a lot of pressure and guilt off his family if all they're doing is following his wishes. So let's talk about one more, uh, and, and this is uh, a case where we're using uh, Medicaid. And so uh, Mr. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Reed contacted us. Mr. Reed has cancer, 
he's been diagnosed with a uh, di he's been discharged to a nursing home, paying eight thousand dollars a month. Their assets include uh, Mrs. Reed's uh, $80,000 IRA, a home and a joint account of $60,000. Uh, he was told by a nursing home they would need, they would need to spend uh, all, down all of his resources before Medicaid would help. And Medicaid would put a lien on the home that his wife lived in. Mrs. Reed was worried that her husband would not get good care if he went on Medicaid. So uh, we got Mr. Reed on Medicaid. Uh, Mrs. Reed was able to keep all of the assets without a spend down and no lien was placed on the home. I wanna add here something important. If Mr. Reed uh, was a wartime veteran, we would have been able to tap into VA benefits uh, and VA benefits could be up to $2,200. And there's some requirements about that or some restrictions, but we have a lot of clients, uh, I think we've got 60 or 70 clients that are receiving some type of uh, VA benefits and many of them are receiving the, the full benefit that's available. I wanna share one more with you. Uh, it's not in the slideshow. Uh, yesterday I met with uh, a gentleman who had been taking care of his mother for 19 years. Uh, but the last 10 years, uh, she's really gone downhill. Uh, and uh, very recently, he had to uh, move her to a nursing home. Uh, and he was told that uh, he would have to sell her home uh, uh, or Medicaid would put a lien against it, even though he'd been living in that home. He also told him he had to spend all of her money down. And we were able to show him how we could protect the home for him because in, in a way it, are, it had become his home uh, so that uh, he would not lose uh, his mother's home. Uh, so again, it's a very specific case, but it was a wonderful result because he was really down about uh, having to lose everything uh, that he and his mother had built together. Just a story here from one of our clients, uh, J.O. It says, uh, uh, my father, Henry and I, uh, Henry and I met with uh, our firm and decided to hire them. It was the best decision of our lives. Uh, they had great knowledge and helped us apply for funds that we had no clue were available. They are there anytime you need them and return calls quick and with answers. Over the years, I've even become friends with a few of the staff. Great team to work with. And so this was a case where we tapped into several different sources uh, to pay for care so that, again, they did not uh, uh, need to go broke. So if you're struggling with how to pay for care, what you need to do is schedule a strategy session as soon as possible. That way we can explore all funding resources. Uh, we want to be sure we get strong powers of attorney and other estate documents in place. Uh, and our goal is to find, get, and pay for good care without going broke. And again, I, I want to talk, emphasize this. I've said this one other time already today uh, about uh, getting really strong estate planning uh, documents done and powers of attorneys done. Uh, just kind of understand that all powers of attorneys are not equal. Uh, and if somebody walks in here and is, if somebody comes in here and their loved one has lost capacity and we have a, a crappy power of attorney, that's kind of the limit of our authority without having to go to court. And even if we go to court, then uh, it's not going to, to be the result that we, we would have if we had a really strong power of attorney. Uh, this is uh, a, a, one of my favorite clients. Um, uh, and, and for a re kind of a funny reason, she came in uh, quite angry uh, because of her husband's uh, uh, failing, uh, just not what she expected uh, in life at that stage. It actually moved to Kansas to be near family and then his health continued to deteriorate. And we had to assist her in uh, placing him in the nursing home and, and watching over his care for her. 
And her comment uh, uh, after the fact, uh, Pat says, uh, my husband needed nursing home care. You guided me through the process. Your care coordinators made sure my husband was getting good care. I highly recommend you because you are always there for your clients and will guide them through everything that goes on, things we never expected to go through. So let's, let's talk about the, the last point here, and that's how to stay at home. Uh, and uh, in many cases, when, you, when it boils right down to it, it may be the most important goal. Uh, it, and it, it's not a home versus a nursing home. There's a lot of things in between. Uh, a lot of our time uh, uh, with our care coordinators who are either social workers or nurses is showing people how to access uh, uh, at-home care or independent care, just something besides the nursing home, uh, but showing them that there are options and, and how important it is uh, for the caregiver to have support. Uh, so, and this really kind of gets down to uh, my journey with my grandmother. Uh, she was 86 when I, uh, when my mom died and all of a sudden I was taking care of her 560 miles away. Uh, she had health issues with including heart, frailty, depression, uh, just giving up. She went on hospice twice. She had very limited resources or her home uh, and $60,000. Uh, the quote from her was, honey, I know someday I will have to go to the nursing home. I just don't want to know about it. And the idea there is that she wanted to be independent as long as she had cognitive abilities. Uh, and she was willing to run the risk of falls and so forth. Our issues were limited money, hospice, uh, health care urging the nursing home, uh, remoteness from the family. Uh, so for several years, we found resources in the community where she lived, which was Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, and then uh, uh, after about six years, I moved her from Fort Worth to Kansas uh, and moved her into one assisted living facility. That was the only one that would take her because of her ailment. She did great there. Uh, she regained her weight. She got kicked off of hospice uh, and uh, was able to stay there uh, for four years. Uh, the last 50 days of her life, she was in a nursing home and she died at age 96. And so the lesson there is with proper guidance, you can stay at home longer. Your transition can be gradual. There must be support for the caregiver, otherwise the caregiver is going to be overwhelmed. Uh, you know, I, I talked with somebody the other day uh, uh, that was a caregiver and they made the comment that, um, you know, this is their first rodeo uh, in, as being a caregiver and our office has been to a whole bunch of rodeos. Uh, and so we know the, the route and we know uh, the, the, the way to go. Uh, we know, we've seen other people make mistakes and we know how not to make those mistakes. And then, you know, helping someone like my grandmother or others to stretch out resources to achieve their goals. So this is a, a family that we worked with. Uh, her, this lady's husband had Parkinson's. And you said, she said, you helped me keep him in home as long as possible. You showed me how to be a better caregiver. I could not have figured out how to pay for care with Medicare and Medicaid on my own. And she went on to say, I highly recommend Clink Scales Elder Law Practice. So what do you need to do if you're facing chronic aging or, or if you're facing aging or chronic care issues, uh, we wanna meet with you for a strategy session. Uh, we just don't wait, the longer you wait, the greater the crisis and the more limited the options and where whatever stage you're at, don't give up, there are solutions. Um, I felt very, this is a, a JB, uh, 
kind of a classic stoic farmer. Uh, I felt very comfortable with everyone I worked with. Kling Scales helped us through some very hard years. It was, we had to place his, his wife into a nursing home and that was really dramatic, uh, traumatic for him. So, so far you've discovered there are ways to plan for possible long-term care costs and uh, with, with a plan that will protect your, your spouse, your family, and your assets. Uh, you can pay for long-term care with private resources, or if necessary, you can access government programs, but you don't have to go broke. And with proper care and planning, you can delay or avoid nursing home as long as you, allowing you to stay at home longer. But I hope you get this one thing. Uh, with proper planning with an expert, uh, it improves your, the opportunity to stay at home to be sure you protect your family and preserve your assets from the devastation of long-term care costs. You don't have to go broke. So how do you make this happen? Um, so, I, I mean, there's a couple ways. One is you can go out and do it on your own. Uh, trial and error. Uh, certainly it's going to be slower, uh, a lot of traps, uh, uh, more expensive uh, in the long run it could be. Uh, or uh, because you're here, I suspect that you're ready to take some kind of action. So what I've done is we're going to set aside some time for you for a strategy session about avoiding planning and paying for long-term care. Uh, so how does this work? Uh, we're going to schedule a, uh, we're going to uh, uh, give you, uh, have you call our office, send you an email uh, about scheduling a strategy session. Uh, typically what we'll do is we'll visit with you first. And then if we feel like we can help you, we're going to schedule a 60 to 90 minute meeting in person by Zoom or telephone with me or one of my other two, uh, one of our other two attorneys, uh, my partner is Jenny Walters or Adam Dees. There we will discuss your financial and legal needs should you require outside care. If you develop a chronic illness or dementia, we'll review your current estate plan and establish with you long-term goals. If you're dealing with a chronic illness or aging issue, we'll develop a plan to keep you safe and in the least restrictive environment. And we'll answer you all the questions that you have about your unique situation. And everybody's situation is unique. I, I just, they're never the same. There's always some special twist and, th and that's great. At the end of our time together, uh, I'll, well, you'll have an analysis of your current plan. You have better clarity of your issues and goals you'll have a blueprint on how to achieve the goals and we'll let you know an exact amount of the investment to achieve those goals. Uh, after our meeting, you'll decide to get started and we'll draft a plan. We'll schedule our next meeting uh, to finalize that plan. And then we'll prepare the necessary uh, documents and other steps to be signed and uh, uh, put into place by you uh, we'll then work together on the other tools and steps such as how to title property, uh, what other products we should be looking at. If you're dealing with a chronic illness or aging issues that require assistance, uh, we'll have you meet with one of our care coordinators. But typically, we, for this type of strategy session, we would charge $450, but because you're here today, uh, that's free because I don't have to repeat a lot of this stuff uh, uh, at that strategy session. So sounds too good to be true. So what's the catch? Uh, we've, we've scheduled eight sp spots available for people who attended this workshop. Uh, and that's over the next three weeks. So if you want to do this, then you need to call this number 877-325-8040. Or uh, Emily is going to send you a survey monkey 
uh, in a follow-up email, and that'll be done uh, probably today. Uh, and then again, we'll, we'll talk to you about what's going on and if we can help you, and then we'll set up a strategy session. So my personal guarantee is that you're going to end up knowing more uh, after that strategy session than you did today. You're going to have an analysis of, of what happens if you do nothing and your time's not going to be wasted. So again, uh, if you want to book the strategy session uh, or if you want the strategy session, call 877-325-8040 or click on the Survey Monkey. Uh, and this is what it's going to look, look like. Um, that Emily will send out to you. Because uh, if you schedule the strategy session, we're going to give you a protect your family, don't write a blank check to the nursing home. That's a book that I authored a chapter in, and we're gonna give you a written summary of our recommendations. So remember, uh, call the number or click on the Survey Monkey link. Uh, and you're going to get the free strategy session, an analysis of your current plan, a free written report to achieve your goals, and, and the free book, Protect Your Family, Don't Write a Blank Check to the Nursing Home. So Emily, I'm gonna turn that over to you now. And if there's anything you need to add, if there's any questions. Yes, um, so we do have one question here, Randy. Um, what is the average stay for individuals to stay in a retirement home? Uh, you know, that number kind of jumps around. Uh, generally, uh, men are a little bit shorter than women. Uh, uh, generally, men, the average stay is about 22 months. And women uh, is a little bit more than that, like 28 months. Uh, so not quite two years would be an average, would be an average stay, according to uh, this statistics that have been shared with me. And so, you know, I always, um, two to three or four years. Now, you know, I, I have client, you know, my mother-in-law, um, my wife's mother was in the nursing home in Wichita for uh, over seven years. Um, and so uh, statistics are statistics, but, uh, but that's, that's kind of what I, if I, somebody asked me to quote a statistic, that's, that's what I've heard. Okay, thank you for addressing that. Um, Randy, would you mind going back to the slide before Pat's statement? I think I might be able to help you get there. Someone wanted you to, to view that again. It's towards the beginning. Um, but while you're finding that also, we have another question, um, one question that we get quite a bit actually. Um, what age is a good age to begin planning? Perfect. Well, uh, <clears throat> let me just share with you. I, I believe that everyone, once they reach 18 years of age, ought to have some fundamental documents in the place, uh, whether that is powers of attorney, it's in a will and, and that sort of thing. When my kids turned 18, I, I made them do powers of attorneys. Uh, so if something happened that my wife and I could take action for them. Um, as far as uh, planning for long-term care, uh, I really think in the 50s is uh, uh, really the, the clock is ticking. Uh, certainly by the 60s, uh, you really need to uh, have a, a plan in place. Now, you know, we have clients that come in that are 70 and 80 have no plan. And, and that's great. Uh, we can get a plan in place. But yeah, I really urge people to, uh, to if you're, if we're talking about planning for long term care is, is really to start in the 50s. But again, Emily is not near that, but she needs powers of attorneys and a, a will or a trust in place. Uh, so uh, I, I will tell you that to anyone that's 18 years or, old, or older, but for long-term planning purposes, uh, 60 and above, 50 and above, I would suggest you start looking at it. Okay, this is the slide before Pat. I wonder if that's the one. Yes, I think so. Thank you for going back to that. 
And we have a few more comments here. We have a comment from someone and I'm already working with Jennifer and Kayla. I could not do it without them. Thank you so much for sharing that with us this morning. Jennifer and Kayla are the best. Um, here's one more question here. Do you help individuals figure out if you need long-term care insurance or not? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, we don't sell it. So we don't have a dog in the fight, but we, we would, yeah, you know, we do that a lot, uh, uh, analyze people's policies and, and talk about whether it's uh, appropriate for them under the circumstances or if there are some other tools that might be available to them, so. Perfect. Some people are not eligible for long-term care insurance for health reasons or, or, or whatever. Uh, so we look at some other tools sometimes. Perfect. Um, well, thank you very much for addressing all those questions. Thank you everyone for sending in those questions. They're wonderful questions. Um, last one here. What if we have used a different lawyer? Can we still come in and see you? Of course. And, and we get that a lot. I mean, just kind of understand that a lot of times people have seen a general practitioner uh, whose focus may not be on elder care issues. Uh, and um, our, our focus is on elder care issues. So, uh, and th so th that happens a lot. Wonderful. Thank you for addressing all those questions. Um, if you have any last minute ones, please feel free to add them now in the chat box. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. Um, I do want to kindly remind everyone that you will receive that follow-up email that Randy mentioned that will contain the two important things. It will include a recording of the session. Um, we provide that to you so you can share it with other family members, friends, colleagues that weren't able to make it to the session today. Or so you can go ahead and go back through and take notes on this important topic. The second thing that email includes is a SurveyMonkey link that I am putting in the chat box right now that Randy mentioned. Okay, so it's in the chat box. The sooner you fill it out, the better. Um, if you fill out that quick two minute survey, you will receive that completely free strategy session where you will speak with one of our attorneys about your completely unique situation. On that same survey link, you can also request our free book that Randy co-authored himself, Protect Your Family, Don't Write a Blank Check to the Nursing Home. So I want to go ahead and reiterate that you can call our office anytime at that number there on your screen. Um, if you have any questions regarding the free strategy session, the book, or just any other questions like the ones here from the chat box today, they've been wonderful questions. Um, we're always, always happy to chat with you. I would also invite you all to stay up to date on our upcoming events on our website, and I'll put that in the chat box now as well. And we are very excited that we are going to be coming to Wichita area um, for our first in-person workshop in over a year. Um, so stay tuned to that um, on our website if you're ever interested in coming to one of Randy's in-person workshops where we can kind of go more into depth and get that face-to-face -face interaction that everyone so misses. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one last call here for questions before we close up. Um, doesn't look like I see anything coming through. Um, so we wanna go ahead and thank you all so much for your attendance today. Um, and we really hope to hear from you and work with you soon. So thank, thank you everyone. Thanks Randy.